The time has finally arrived. Cyberpunk 2077 has left its official unofficial beta period after three years, and the 2.0 update has arrived. For those of you who've been around on the channel for a fair amount of time now, you know that on launch, I actually played Cyberpunk 2077 on the channel for a little bit and really enjoyed it. Despite the bugs and issues that it was having, my system was able to run it without too much jank. There was still plenty of jank because that's just how the game was. But I... I did enjoy it. I did enjoy it. And then I spent some more time once I canceled that Let's Play, playing it in my own time as well, before I decided to put it down and enjoy the full proper experience once CDPR had proven that they were able to actually make the game be the way they wanted it to be. And now, that time has come. And it's actually, like, really good. Like, it's actually very, very good. So today, we're going to talk about that. Hello everyone, my name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. If you like what I do, you enjoy my video content, whether it be guides, let's plays, commentary, news, what have you, a like and a subscription would be very much appreciated. I'm a small YouTuber trying to make YouTube my full-time career, and it's very hard to grow in the ecosystem in gaming nowadays, so any little bit of help that you can provide would be very much appreciated. Thank you. So yeah, man, Cyberpunk 2077, it is back, it is here. <coughs> uh, my voice is not entirely back. I will... Just say right now, before we get fully into the topic, apologies if you hear any scratchiness in my voice, if there's any quick coughs, throat clears, anything like that. Uh, I've had COVID for the past week. I'm still not over it. I still can't smell or taste anything properly. I've been coughing up a lung. So apologies if I don't sound quite right. And apologies if there hasn't been a lot of content coming out. I'm working on trying to get back into the swing of things now. But it's really been kicking my butt, and unfortunately I take a little while to recover from such things compared to most people because of the way my immune system is being a cancer survivor and all. So, just wanted to get that out there. If things sound weird, that's why. My apologies. Uh, but yeah, back to Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk 2077 is one of those games that I very much enjoyed despite its flaws and very much is right up my alley, right? I love the idea of, like, kind of post-apocalyptic dystopian transhumanist future sci-fi stuff i love the idea of like the melding of man and machine and what that means for people things like ghost in the shell i absolutely adore cyberpunk concepts in general uh, blade runner all that type of stuff is stuff that i love hell even stuff like armored core 6 where we see this fusing of man and machine through the augmented human program and everything <clears throat> my apologies excuse me um i love all that stuff i absolutely adore it and so Cyberpunk 2077, unsurprisingly, scratches at that same itch for me. And now, the game actually feels like what it was meant to be okay. when it was first revealed and when it was first launched three years ago. Uh, what does that mean? So, from what I've played thus far, I've put about 15 hours into a completely new character since the 2.0 update came out. Pretty much everything has been rebuilt. Uh, there's... Next to no glitches, there's a couple of glitches that I've run into, but nothing like when the game first came out. Combat and dialogue and menus and everything all feel way, way better. Outfits are completely cosmetic. All of your actual stats have been moved to your cyberware. Cyberware has been completely redone. It's a whole new menu. You have a whole scale of like each piece of cyberware costs X amount to be able to slot in. You only have so much tolerance. You have to increase it over time. Uh, the actual combat feels so much smoother. You have actual abilities now. All of the skill trees have been reworked. There's fully new models for a lot of characters, so they actually look and feel way better, like they fit into the world way better. Uh, one of the notable things in the very beginning of the game when you see the flashback to uh, 2020, 2022, I can't remember, uh, in Johnny Silverhand's time, and you see Saburo Arasaka, he's actually younger now. Because it was so weird, this is a flashback of like 50 years, and yet he looked exactly the same in that flashback as he did as a 150-year-old man in the current time when you just saw him. It was super weird, but now they've got a new model for him, he actually looks younger. There's other side characters, NPCs, and things that I've run into that are way younger. The police force actually functions like a police force. You actually have a wanted system now, GTA style, that goes up as you commit crimes. And you'll actually hear radio dispatch go out, and the cops pursue you, like, super aggressively. Actually feel like a dangerous police force in this dangerous dystopian future. It's, so, it's super cool. It's felt so good to play. 
Um, part of that is probably also as well that I have upgraded my system since I last played the game. But even then, like, you can see on console, you can see in people's gameplay streams, three years of time to bring the game out of the beta state that it essentially was in when it first launched is a lot of time for a studio like CDPR, and especially a studio with that much pressure on them, to actually turn the game into what it was supposed to be, and it shows. It really, really does. Right now, I've been playing a sort of dexterity and strength build with actual, like, physical melee fighting and then like assault rifles and SMGs with a balance between the two stats that govern those skill trees and it's been a ton of fun. I got super early access to the Mantis Blade arm cyberware that actually turns your arms into swords. So I've been running around with those, deflecting bullets. I've got this dash ability that I've been upgrading where I can quickly dash from side to side, almost like I'm quick boosting in Armored Core, which has felt really good. And then I just got an upgrade that actually increases the dash distance and speed if I'm dashing towards someone. So like I can be in the middle of a gunfight, I can have like my assault rifle or my handgun out and popping people off here, there. And then when I want to switch over to my Mantis Blades to go after a big target, I can pull them out and immediately just seamlessly dash straight to my target and start swinging. If anyone's shooting at me, I can block and deflect the bullets. It's a ton of fun. And I'm not even level 20 yet. And I think max level now is like 60 or 70. So there's a ton of build variety that you can do that I have not even scratched the surface of. So I'm super excited to see what I can do with that. There's also been a ton of really fun little Easter eggs and such that I've seen for Edge Runners, which obviously was a big boost that Cyberpunk needed while CDPR was still getting the game back on its feet. Uh, if you haven't seen Cyberpunk Edge Runners, it is the anime adaptation made by Trigger. Highly, highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite anime of all time. It's a phenomenal story, incredibly well done, super impressive visuals and voice acting and everything. Uh, and there's a bunch of references to the characters and the story of that in the game. A few of your skills are actually represented by characters from the anime, which is very, very cool. I actually just found one of the characters, Rebecca, her shotgun in a bush where it fell after a certain climactic event during the anime that I won't spoil. But so I just found that and I've been using that. And I found the start of a side quest where I'd actually like plays the maybe first two minutes of the first episode of the anime and your character's like, whoa, what was that? And then you start going on this little quest that I'm assuming is going to tell you more about the anime. I haven't progressed it yet. But that's been super fun to see as well. And it helps the whole world feel more alive because all of those characters and events that I saw in the anime that became one of my favorite anime of all time are now part of this world. It's something that happened that I experienced through a different media format. And now it's part of Night City. And it's super cool. Uh, and this is all to say, like, Wow, all this cool new stuff, and the big DLC hasn't even come out yet. Phantom Liberty is supposed to be out in a couple of days from the time of recording here, and is being praised across the board with 10 out of 10s. People are calling it the best video game expansion of all time, which, I don't know, that's very high praise. There's some really good expansions and DLC out there. But, I mean, it sounds phenomenal. It's starring Idris Elba as one of the main characters. Apparently adds a new ending to the game. All sorts of cool stuff. So I can't wait to check that out, but just... The way the game has been brought up from the technical mess that it was before to actually feeling feature complete. I haven't even talked about there's like vehicle combat now and everything. You've got uh, cars with actual like machine guns and rockets on them that you can use. You can very easily engage in combat while you're driving around in a car or a motorcycle and it feels really fluid and snappy. There's new skills that let you do all sorts of fun stuff like... I can double tap B to actually like get up on the window of my car and then hop straight up and like start popping shots off as my car careens into a group of enemies or whatever. Super cool stuff. Like things that in your head, when you think of something like a cyberpunk setting, especially if you've seen something like Ghost in the Shell or Edge Runners or whatever, you feel like you should have been able to do in the game all this time, but you couldn't. The mechanics just were not there. Things felt super clunky and buggy and didn't quite work right, and none of that exists anymore as far as I've been able to tell. Again, I'm only about 15 hours into the game. I'm just past Act 1, going through Act 2 now, meeting some of the major characters that are going to be relevant for V's story and getting some of those initial quests started off that progress the story, doing some side quests, stuff like that. Um, but it hasn't felt like a burden to play at all. Like, I really did enjoy my time with Cyberpunk 2077 when it first came out, but it felt painful to play sometimes, because it's just like, oh, man, like, 
uh, something, some visual glitch happens that takes you out of the experience, or like you're, you're trying to do something, but the controls feel clunky and slow, or like you just don't have the abilities that you feel like you should have and just aren't there. So it takes you out of the experience. That hasn't happened with me with this. I've been just grinding through and loving every second of it. And I can't wait to see the stuff that I haven't seen before, because everything I've done with this new character I've done previously. Um, but even then, even though I've done it previously, all the new systems and the new guns and the new ways things work and the new like earlier access to cool cyberware and the ability to customize your character and all this different stuff, the world just feels better to exist in. There's so many new different NPCs. Like I mentioned before, all of your defensive stats are stuck in cyberware, so now you can just wear whatever you want, make your V look however you want, and not worry about what your stats are, and wear, like, this ugly crap because, well, I need the defense. No, you don't need to worry about that anymore. Your cyberware's got you covered. So you can just make this whatever-you-want character to suit the type of character that you feel you would have in this type of setting. It's an absolute blast. I absolutely cannot recommend it enough. If you're someone who, like me, got the game when it came out and never quite finished it or like liked what you saw but couldn't get past the glitches and the bugs and all that type of stuff, then I would recommend trying it out again now if you've got the time. Obviously, we're in a huge, like, just absolute monsoon of good releases this year, especially in the tail half of the year. But if you finish some of those games or you're looking to take a break from something, like I was grinding through Baldur's Gate pretty hard while I've been sick, just got to Act 3, decided it's a decent point to take a little bit of a break, play something else for a little bit while I've been down. Cyberpunk was the perfect choice for that. Do it, man. Absolutely do it. The 2.0 update is free for everybody. Uh, you, If you have the game, you have the update. It's only on current-gen stuff. Uh, so, like, yeah, I mean, if you were trying to play Cyberpunk on a PS4 or and Xbox One, God help you anyway, but um, yeah, PS5 and the new Xbox series and PC all got this update for free, it's just how the game is now, so check it out, absolutely, and I mean, even if you beat the game already, and you kind of want to check out what's new, do it, man, start a new character, and build from the ground up, and see how the game has changed, because again, it's been really cool to me, just playing through the stuff that I've already seen, I can't wait to see like what is new in the new content as well once phantom liberty drops i'll probably be checking that out uh apparently you want to pretty much wait till the end of the game to play it anyway for it to make the most narrative sense so i've got time to play the rest of the game before that comes out may not even get it at launch but it's definitely want to check it out and uh yeah let me know what you guys think if you've been playing cyberpunk 2077 since the 2.0 update came out let me know what your experience has been chat about it what types of cool builds are you doing? What types of cool vehicles have you found? What types of fun quests have you done? I would love to hear about it because it's a shame that the game launched in the state that it did. And I'm happy to see that it's kind of made a big comeback and is the game that it should have been all this time. So uh, that said, I'm going to go rest my throat for a little bit. I can already feel it getting raspy just from this 13 minutes of talking that I've done. And then I have to go record a different video that I've been meaning to do. So look forward to that. But uh, my name has been Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. Thank you all so much for watching. I do very much appreciate it. I hope you all have a good night. Stay safe and healthy out there. And remember, be good to each other. Bye now.